Hey ladies, so this is lecture two of chapter five. We are going to talk about the first sec section one um, of chapter five. Um, section one is on the church and how it teaches about the Blessed Trinity. So we're, we're going to talk a little bit about how ultimately how no matter how much we try, we'll never fully understand the Trinity but we can still reflect on the inner life and the active and inseparable work of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, I'm going to have you guys grab your books right now and pull them out because there are a couple of pages I want you to look at. Um, I don't know that we'll have time to do it in here, but I'll want you to do it right after while it's fresh. So the introduction of this section talks about, um, it starts off with this passage, which hopefully is familiar to you guys. Um, but the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. So I'm hoping that sounds familiar if you've ever gone to Mass, which I know you have because we do at school. Because that's usually how it starts off. So even in the early church, when Paul wrote the letter to the Corinthians, he addressed and acknowledged the Blessed Trinity. So it's not the super new thing. It's something that Jesus Christ, through his life and his works um, and everything that he did, revealed to us was God. And so the relationship they have together is inseparable, but at the same time distinct. And so that's kind of confusing, um, and that's okay if that confuses you. Um, it confuses everybody who's ever tried to comprehend it, even the most intellectual minds throughout history. And so it's not meant for us to um, understand in the same way we can understand like a math problem, but it's, it's meant to be a mystery that we can only know through a relationship with God. Um, so the early church councils and the church fathers developed vocabulary that remains a associated with the Blessed Trinity. As centuries went on, they used the same vocabulary to teach even deeper truth about the Blessed Trinity. Um, so this vocabulary is in your books on page 163. Um, it's, it's not really called Trinitarian vocab, but it's on the top of the page. And it, it your book just gives a little bit more of an explanation than I'm about to give you. Um, I don't want to spend too long talking about it because your book gives a good explanation. Um, but ultimately, the first word is substance. You may have heard instead of substance, nature or essence. Um, and it describes the unity of God as one divine being. All three persons share in the same nature and attributes. Um, St. Gregory says each person considers himself entirely God, the three considered together. And so that would mean that Jesus considered himself God the Father and the Holy Spirit. God the Father considered himself Holy Spirit and um, Jesus and the Father, and so on. And so that that's kind of confusing because they are three distinct persons, and you can't really um, argue that. Like, that's what the church teaches. That's what Jesus revealed. And so, but even so, there's a nature or an essence um, or a substance, substance that makes them uniquely God and describes your unity. And so they use the word substance in different church doctrines and teachings and um, in order to help us understand that. Um, person is used to make the distinction among the three. That's pretty easy, hopefully. Um, and relation would be their relationship with each other. And so um, it designates that distinction of the three persons, um, and it's due to the relationship each person has with the other. So you can't really be a father without a son or a daughter. Um, you can't really be a son or a daughter without a father. And so in, in understanding their relationship with each other, we can understand um, better what this in, inner life of theirs looks like. And so, um, so I hope that makes sense and I hope these words are comfortable enough for you guys to use. Um, so, going on to the next section. Ways 
ways to understand the mystery of the Blessed Trinity. So, ultimately, we've talked about this before. God did create human beings with a desire to know truth. Um, unfortunately, the Trinity is not something the human mind can fully comprehend. We just need to accept that. In the same way that um, there are other mysteries of the faith that we can talk about and know with confidence, but not really fully understand or map out how it makes sense intellectually. Um, so your book goes into the eminence. Uh, it talks about ultimately the inner life of the Trinity. And it talks, it uses the word eminence, um, meaning God exists in God. Uh, I don't know if that's one of your vocab, but it might be. And ultimately, these are some of the things that your book wants you to know. Um, so he wants you to know that God is eternal. He exists without beginning or without end. Again, the human mind cannot think outside of time. It is just not possible, but ultimately, it doesn't matter if we can fully comprehend it. There are certain things we can know, and one of them is that God exists without the constraints of time. Um, God the Father gives fullness of his divine life to his Son, so that the Son is the perfect image of the Father, which is why he is the Son. So we know what the Father looks like because we know the Son, Jesus. Um, because the Son is a perfect image of the Father, the Son still contains all the truth of the Father. And so the Son also is a perfect divine word of the Father. Your book says it that way. It's kind of confusing. Um, but two and three kind of say similar things because we can know like, if we know Jesus, we know God the Father. If we know God the Father, we know Jesus. Through Jesus, God the Father was revealed to us um, perfectly. And so we don't comprehend it perfectly all the time, but it was revealed to us perfectly through Jesus. All of, or sorry, as the Father begets the Son, begets his Son in the love of the Holy Spirit, though the Son loves the Father, the same Holy Spirit, thus the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father is a paternal love for the Son and proceeds from the Son as the filial love of the Son for the Father. So again, this is worded kind of like just very wordy, but basically in the same way, like if a husband and a wife were to love each other perfectly, a child could be the result of it. And that's not a perfect analogy, so don't stick with it too hard. There's a lot of loopholes in it. Um, but that's just an image that your book has given you to help you understand what this expression of love can look like. And so um, I hope that makes sense to you guys. If not, um, you can ask questions to your substitute. They might be able to help you understand it a little bit. Um, so at this time on in your books, your book gives you three really good um symbols for the Trinity. I was going to talk about them for a minute, um, but I'm already at almost 10 minutes, and so I'm not going to. I'm just going to say really quick that they are very well explained on page 165, and so after the video, go ahead and go to those and read through them because I want you to understand them and be able to explain it to me. Um, the easiest one I have found for high school students to understand is the shamrock. So if you're just looking to understand it in one way, then that one's good. Um, the tree and the sun is pretty good, too. And the shield of the trinity is good. Um, it's just a little more wordy. So go ahead and look at those after the video. Um, the trinity is an awesome expression of life and love. So we use the trinity as an example of what our relationships with others should look like. And so... We talk about this life-giving love that we see in a husband and a wife and how a baby can be the result of it. But there's a lot of different ways we can bring life and love into this world. And it's not just through this one avenue. And so through our relationships with others, we can bring, like through your relationships with your friends, you can bring life and love to others. It doesn't have to be the result of a baby. It can be the result of all sorts of um, good things. It can be the result of knowing God, of joy, of peace, of happiness. Um, there's a lot of different expressions, um, but through the Trinity we know what it should look like.
Um, and so God is not some in interpersonal supernatural force. Um, I think I impersonal. That should say impersonal. Um, but he is the fullness of life and love. And so God isn't just some like super distant um, being that kind of watches us mess things up. Rather, he's very involved in our lives. And we can see that through his relationship with the Trinity, in the Trinity. I wish I could explain these things a little bit more in depth and make sure you guys understand them, because um, I know this is sort of a complicated concept. Um, through our efforts, we can understand, though our efforts to understand the Trinity, we can understand how God loves, which was the only fully revealed to us through Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus makes it possible for you to receive the Holy Spirit so that you can be a child of the Father and know the Father's love for you and for you to love him in return. And so only through knowing Jesus Christ can we really encounter the Father. Um, I know his love for us. We sometimes forget that God loves us because we're so focused on all these rules and regulations that we don't always take the time to consider. Maybe he has those in place for our benefit out of love for us. Um, and so through coming to know the Trinity, hopefully you can see that. Uh, while you can never fully grasp the mystery of the Blessed Trinity, you can glory and rejoice in the mystery knowing that it is the source and goal of all life and love. Oh, so this is the last one. This is kind of short. Understanding the economic expression of the Blessed Trinity. Um, so the whole, this is from the, if you ever see CCC, it means Catechism of the Catholic Church. The whole divine economy in the common work of the three divine persons, or sorry, the whole divine economy is the common work of the three divine persons. The work of the Trinity is called salvific or economic expression. Understanding what the divine persons do, or sorry, understanding what the divine persons of the Trinity do begins with knowing and trusting who Jesus was and what he revealed. So we know almost all of what we know about the Trinity because of what Jesus taught us. Now I say almost all. I'm saying not everything. So a lot of this stuff is from the Old Testament. That doesn't mean that Jesus didn't give it meaning. And so technically it is everything we know comes from Jesus. And so, um, I, man, I think I'm just confusing you guys even more, but I hope you're reading your books and it's helping you understand. But everything we know does come from Jesus. But that doesn't mean it just came out of his mouth. It means that he lived it. He expressed it through different avenues. Um, it's in our Gospels. It's in our tradition. And so all these things we know, we know because of him. And so the Father made all things and gives life. The Son taught us about the Father's love. And um, Jesus, Jesus' life brought salvation. The Holy Spirit's loving presence is with the church as sanctifier. I really hope that made sense and I didn't just confuse you guys. Um, if I did, though, this section is page 163 to 166. You can read it on your own. I just tried to explain some of the things that are a little more complicated. Um, I hope it makes sense and you guys are all doing well. Have a great rest of your day. Make good choices. Yeah.